Hello and welcome to this video for Excel Chapter 2 Capstone Exercise. We're on page 531 in your textbook, page 531, um, so you can get turned there. And I'm going to read the information while you're turning in your book. You are an account manager for Inland Jewelers, a regional company that makes custom class rings for graduating seniors. Your supervisor requested a workbook to report on new accounts created on payment plans. The report should provide details on total cost to the student as well as payment information. Each ring has a base price that can fluctuate based on the ring personalization. So first we're going to start with um, under the header here of insert current date. So we are opening our starting workbook that we previously created um, and inserting the current date. So uh, right here the class ring one. So I'm going to choose file, save as, and I'm going to save this here to my computer. You're going to save it to your flash drive and I don't mind put copy of, but I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to put underscore, of course, the last name and first name like usual. And then save that. Then step B, so we just did step A. Step B, it says insert a function in cell B2 that to display the current date and format as long date. So pretty much we're going to be going to our formulas tab and then we're going for date and time and we're going to choose today. I'm going to click OK. Um, and then of course we want the long format so I'm going to actually go to home and then for date I'm going to click on the arrow next to it and then I'm going to go to long date. And it'll expand the column like this. So this is how it should look. <clears throat> and that's step B. Step C is set column B's width to auto fit. So auto fit, which, I mean, we can pretty much just, there's a couple ways you can do that. Um, I pretty much, it already is on auto fit here because of the fact that it slid over. Otherwise, I could double click here, um, but it's basically already there. All right. Calculate the cost. You are ready to calculate the cost of each class ring order. These rings are priced based on their base metal as displayed in range A15 through B19, which you can see there. It says insert a lookup function in cell C5 to display the ring cost for the first student. So C5, you can see Dodson is the name of the first student. He wants a silver ring, and so we're going to put something in there to get that to come across. So we're going to actually use VLOOKUP, which we've been using. So formulas tab, and then I'm going to um, <clears throat> insert a function. I'm going to type in VLOOKUP, push enter, and then I double click on VLOOKUP. And now I have my functions argument box and this information right here. So what we're going to type in here is first off, uh, B5 is our lookup value because we're checking to see okay which type of ring is it and of course it's silver so B5 and then for the table array so that's the information it's pulling from A16 colon B19 so A16 through B19 that of course is our ring type column and cost column but I need to change them to absolute cell references. So if I have my insertion point next to it or in the middle, I can push F4 and it will change it, and then F4 again. So you can see both of them are absolute cell references. Then for the column index number, it's going to be number two because, of course, we're pulling the, the money value. And then uh, for range lookup, it's going to be false. So this is how it should look here in your box, like this. And then this is how it should look over here in your formula bar. So um, the result right here says it's 400, which is correct. I'm going to click OK. And you can see it displayed it properly here in there. Then it says copy the function from cell C5 down through C11. So I'm going to click and grab that fill handle. I'm going to pull down here through C11. Right there. And you can see the, the totals are displaying there correctly. And then, of course, step C, we need to apply accounting number format to column C. So we are going to do that. So um, we just basically have that stuff already selected. So I'm going to go to the Home tab, choose accounting number format. And then, of course, you can see the two decimal places there, which works out well. 
All right, then we're to determine the total due. You will calculate the total due for each student's order. The total is the base price of the ring plus an additional charge for personalization if applicable. So be, that means if they did it or if they didn't do it. Step A, insert an if function in cell E5 to calculate the total due. If the student has chosen to personalize the ring, there's an additional charge of 5% located in cell B21. So that's down here, B21. That must be applied. If not, the student only pays the base price. Use appropriate relative and absolute cell references. So the way we're going to do this, um, they already said in cell E5. So I'm going to click there right under total. And then I'm applying here, it says an if function. So let's do that. Formulas, insert function. And I right here, my list is already if, so I'm going to double click on that. It's going to come up here looking like this. And then for our logical test, the first part, we are going to enter in if D5 which of course is the personalized part, so that's what that means, equals yes, so that's the first part, that's our logical test. If D5 equals yes, then for the value of true, so that's if it's the case that they did that, we're gonna do C5 plus C5 multiplied by B21. And of course, B21 is the 5%, except we need to make B21 an absolute cell reference. So I'm going to push F4 and do that. So if it's true, it's going to be this calculation right here. So if it's a yes. If it's a no, we're going to put it's just C5. So if it's yes, they're going to add that sales tax. If it's false, it's just going to be the price that's there. Okay. And then, of course, make sure you check over here. Um, the formula bar should look like this. All right, I'm going to click OK. You can see it says our formula results going to be 420, and that is accurate. So this should be in cell E5. Make sure it's accurate. It says step B, copy the function from cell E5 down through E11. So I'm going to do that. Click and hold the fill handle, and then just drag it down, and it looks correct. And then step C for this one, again, account, apply the counting number format to these cells. So I'm going to click on that dollar symbol, dollar sign over here in the number group. And there we go. We're breezing through this very quickly. Calculate the monthly payment. Your next step is to calculate the periodic payment for each student's account. The payments are based on the year's finance in column F and the annual interest rate in cell B22. All accounts are paid on a monthly basis. So step A, it says insert the function in cell G5 cell G5 to calculate the first student's monthly payment. Use appropriate relative and absolute cell references. So the way we're going to do that um, is we're going to use the PMT formula, or excuse me, function, so payment. So I'm going to go, I went to the formulas tab, insert function, and of course PMT is right here. So we're dealing with that. So PMT, here's my boxes here. and Here's the information we're going to put in to figure this out. So we need to figure out the first student's monthly payment with it. In this first box for the rate, it's going to be B22, except make it an absolute cell reference, so I push F4, divided by 12. And of course, B22 is this part right down here. The interest rate is 3%, so that's what it's pulling from. Divide by 12. Then it says for the n per part, <laughs> so total number of payments, n per, we're going to type in F5 multiplied by 12. So F5, and of course F5 is right up here, which is years. Let me move this over a little bit for you. So you can see it's just going to be one year. So years, so 1, F5 multiplied by 12, and then PV, which of course is the present value, PV is going to be minus E5. E5, of course, is the total value. So, um, And then you got this here and this one right here. So, And it should look like this in your formula bar. The B22 divided by 12, F5 multiplied by 12, and then, of course, minus E5. And then it says this is my formula result, which is correct. And I'm going to click OK. 
All right, you can see here, um, step that it came out correct. I'm gonna cut or grab the fill handle and copy this down here as well for step B. And you can see how those look, those are correct. Then of course, as usual, apply counting number format, but it looks like it's already applied in mine. So, oh, you know what, it's actually currency. Make sure you apply counting number format. It looks a little bit different. All right, we're on finalize the workbook. You perform some basic statistical calculations and finalize the workbook with formatting and page setup options. So calculate totals in cells C12, E12, and then of course G12. That's step A. So let's do that. And it's just pretty much you're putting in the sum function. So I can click here in C12. I go up here to auto sum. I choose sum. Voila, right there, that's the one I want. I push enter. And then I go over here to E12, same thing. Choose the arrow next to auto sum, choose sum, push enter. And then one more time, arrow, sum, push enter. So just like that. Um, and you can see it selected the cells up above it. That's how it got the sum. And my numbers match up. So if your numbers don't match up, go back and check it. All right, then step B, it says apply counting number format to the cell. So um, it looks like this one has it, this one has it, and this one already has it. If it doesn't, click that dollar sign up here and apply that. Then it says set point three left and right margins. Ensure that the page prints on only one page. So I'm going to go to page layout. I'm going to choose um, to look at the margins here. I'm just going to do um, custom margins. So I could have pressed the dialog box launcher and gone to the margins. And of course it says left and right need to be 0.3. So I'm going to reduce, or let me, I actually need to type it in here it looks like. So 0.3 and then minus 0.3 and I can just click out and you can see those two are selected, have 0.3 in there. And it says to only print on one page. So I'm going to do print preview. And then of course you're making sure it's only on one page, which mine is only on one page. Remember if you need to, um, you can choose um, in the settings over here it says print active sheets you can choose to set up the print area or you can tell it I believe it's with the scaling yes fit sheet on one page so if yours isn't set up properly um, you can do that and then I'm going to push the back arrow because we do need to add a footer so I'm just going to do that uh, what I mentioned earlier click the dialog box launcher on the page setup group and then I'm going to go to header and footer I'm going to choose custom footer and then of course left section your name and then center is of course uh, your I'm trying to remember uh, your <laughs> excuse me sheet name I'm going to have a moment and then of course file name in the right section click OK and of course OK again and this is how you complete um, the workbook here for the capstone exercise. So um, remember, check your formulas as you go. Make sure you type them properly. Always, always, anytime you're using a VLOOKUP, you have to make sure things are spelled properly. So it's good to do a spell check. We didn't have to create this one like the last exercise, but a lot of people had difficulty because they didn't double check their work as they did it. You do want to finish this in a timely fashion, but you're going to save yourself more time by choosing to look as you go and double check. And that's why I try to do in the exercises as well to kind of give you an idea of how it looks when you do it. So good job following along. Great job finishing Excel Chapter 2 Capstone Exercise Number 1.